Hey folks, I'm Chris, and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with another tune-up. But before we get started, I wanted to remind everybody that we're now officially affiliated with our Canadian retailer of choice, Harry Tarantula. If you want to help support the channel by picking up singles or sealed product, head on over and use the promo code CMDR Space Mechanic at checkout. Now let's see what's in the workshop today. Viewer Robert Hubbard writes, Hey Chris, just wanted to shoot off a tune-up to you. I haven't been able to get this deck to work yet. It's built for some tapping and untapping shenanigans alongside some counter spells. Hopefully you can help a guy out and this can be a fun project deck that'll maybe steal a game or two. Thanks for submitting your very budget list, Robert. It's great to see what kind of shenanigans we can get into while keeping things relatively shoestring from a price point perspective. Your chosen commander, the Bant Flyer Drevi Imperial Tactician, is a great choice and is typically seen with some higher power level tricks in mind. Recently reprinted in the sexy etched foil of Commander Legends, Derevi is a great cheater. What I mean is, Derevi will never cost more than four to cast from the command zone thanks to its activated ability. And cheats by tapping or untapping permanence not only on enters the battlefield, but whenever a creature you control deals combat damage. <laughs> that leaves us with a lot of potential for build paths and inclusions in the 99. Let's take a look at how you've put your list together. Well, right away, I can see that close to half your budget has gone into the inclusion of Ristic Study. It's definitely worth that price tag, and I'm glad you happen to have one on hand. There is a reason why it's a staple of our format. But in regards to the other cards in your list, your strategy looks pretty diffused. What I mean is there's a lack of focus and a lack of synergy for a deck you really want to get humming. Derevi is a combo engine and requires fuel and maintenance in order to really purr. What I see in your current list is what looks like the start of a merfolk deck with wizard synergies and big sea creatures to top off the curve. Not bad to steal a few games, but the parts don't really play well with each other. Let's use Derevi as the deck's spine and move outwards from there. Buckle up because I'm going to do a number on this list, keeping it to your budget and keeping some of the core fundamentals. First, I want to carve out the big fatties from the list. Stormtide Leviathan, Simic Sky Swallower, and Colossal Whale all help with inevitability, but Derevi really wants to be a death by a thousand cuts deck rather than a stompy deck. Then I want to keep anything with good tap synergies or with natural evasion. Fallow Sage, Stony Brook Schoolmaster, and Kiora's Follower are all great examples of this. Ways to get further value out of Derevi's tap slash untap ability. In this case, it could be milling extra tokens or delaying an untap until you really need it. Your spells include a lot of unsummoned style effects, Voyages End, Curfew, Hoodwink, and kind of removal spells that temporarily deal with a threat. I think we can find some ways to permanently deal with threats instead. And you've got some creature stealing effects in the deck too. Classics like Mind Control and Control Magic to snag a big threat from an opponent. Turn their hard work into your benefit. I like that for the list. Why pay seven or eight mana for your own big threat when you can just let your opponent pay and take it from them? So here's where I'm really going to gut the existing list. I want to keep some of the synergies, but cut some of the cards that are in here for the sake of just being here. The name of the game is going to be Flyers. We want to look at small evasive creatures like we would in an Edric, Spy Master of Trest, or a Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow deck. Why? Well, because we want to be all about those combat damage triggers. That's where we'll get value and synergies from each and every card in our list. So in comes creatures like Judge's Familiar, Soul Catcher, and Fairy Seer. Small, evasive creatures that synergize both with each other and with your commander. 
This way you can do things like cast spells on your turn and hold up interaction on later turns by untapping your lands. Along this same line are creatures with pseudo evasion like Spire Tracer or Treetop Scout. They may not have the flying synergies, but they're almost always guaranteed combat triggers with Derevia. So let's build on those triggers. What more can we do that triggers on combat damage? Well, there's card draw, like Reconnaissance Mission, Bident of Thassa, and Coastal Piracy, for instance. This means that even pecking in for one point of damage without Derevi on the board can help refill your hand. There are also cards like Druid's Repository that can net you mana when your creatures connect too. Great for storing up mana to use on later turns and potentially ramp very quickly. But what about more tap or untap synergies? Once we get those triggers from Derevi, it's fine to untap our lands, but what more can we do? Well, let's look at some creatures with relevant tap abilities we could include. I'm clearly a big fan of drawing cards, so I'd want to include a zombie, Lady of Scrolls. This can essentially function like another card draw on damage ability. Or Arcanus the Omnipotent, which can net you three additional cards per untap trigger with Derevi, very quickly filling your hand. This may be one of the only decks where I would actually recommend keeping Reliquary Tower in the list. Faeborough Elder is another great way to net tons of mana off of untap triggers. Each tap getting you up to three mana on top of being a bulky, vigilant body. But the real nasty synergies are going to come from a few enchantments. Since we're going to have some triggers to throw around, why don't we couple your unsummon effects with our triggers? Dismiss into Dreams, Willbreaker, and Cowardice are all ways to toss around those triggers and start doing the things you love. Unsummoning creatures, stealing creatures, or just flat out killing them. This can be pretty nasty and pretty quickly become a lock on the board, preventing any opponents from ever having creatures again. So, naturally, include at your own risk. I'm the devil, so I would happily recommend to jam these in. <laughs> For your interaction package, I recommend more permanent solutions to your problems than your existing unsummon effects. Kenris Transformation, Imprisoned in the Moon, and Kazmina's Transmutation are all ways to shut down opponent's creatures on a much longer term basis. They may be cast at sorcery speed, but with your untapped triggers, you can reliably cast spells on your turn and hold up counter magic. Speaking of counter magic, let's look at how we can beef up our interaction. Let's fill it with classics like counter spell, prime removal like generous gift and beast with it. These are going to help you deal with just about anything. And since you'll be able to keep mana up post attack, these are going to be great ways to control the board. For board wipes, just in case, let's look at wipes that consider a creature's power and or toughness. Dusk to Dawn is a great board wipe since your creatures are going to be tiny at all times. Citywide Bust is another option since your creatures are almost never going to have four or more toughness. And Fell the Mighty is a great way for you to pick and choose what gets destroyed as well. Overall, we want to build a deck with stronger synergies, which is able to do more in a wider range of situations. We want to build into threats that don't come in the form of big power, but rather in the form of control over the pace of play. For upgrades, your mana base would be the best place to start. Because you're running three colors, you need diversity in the colors you can produce. While you can run nothing but basics and be fine, the more lands you run that can net you multiple colors just improves consistency. Shock lands like Breeding Pool, Temple Garden, and Hallowed Fountain are good starts, but will set you back over $10 each. The same is said for the Bond lands, Rejuvenating Springs, Bountiful Promenade, and Sea of Clouds. They all really help your ability to ensure you can cast Derevi on turns two or three. There are also two mana dorks I'd recommend, Bloom Tender and Noble Hierarch. 
They are not inexpensive, but can be great payoffs with your untapped triggers and the versatility they provide in color production. All up to you if you want to, you know, triple the budget of your deck on a card or two. Lastly, if you want to have a way to win with combat damage, let's work smarter and not harder. Triumph of the Hordes is where it's at. Turn just a couple of flyers into game over with this one sorcery, killing your opponents with infect damage. A big thanks to our viewers for submitting these deck lists. And I certainly hope that this deck's owner is going to let us know in the comments below how they've chosen to tweak and tune this deck. And if you want to submit a deck for a tune-up, please reach out via email, via Twitter, or in the comments of this or any video. I make sure to read them all personally. Let's take a look at how we've chosen to tweak this list today. So I've almost started from the ground up with your list. I've kept in some of the best synergizing pieces from your deck and overhauled the rest. Now, instead of a sort of merfolk tribal deck, we are a deck all about evasion, all about connecting for small bits of damage and getting triggers based on that damage. The deck is going to keep its hand full, its mana open, and your opponents on tilt. You're packed full of small flyers, tap and untap synergies, and ways to generate massive amounts of card advantage. I wouldn't be surprised if you could snowball most of your deck into your hand on turns four or five. But be careful. There are no empty library win cons in here and no real ways to win via combat damage since your creatures are tiny and you have no extra turn spells. So lock the table, generate massive card advantage and shut down your opponent's strategies all in a deck with a price tag under $100. I hope you like some of the changes we've made to your list, Robert. Please ensure to let us know in the comments how you've managed to tweak your deck. And everyone else, let us know how you would continue to improve this list. But as always, until next time, folks, good luck and have fun. A huge thanks to all of our patrons for making this content possible. We couldn't do this here on the channel without your help. A special shout out to our Lodestone Golems this month, Ben Davis, Ben Frayne, Sterling Langford, and Will Briggs. And a special shout out to our Metalwork Colossi, Austin Charlotte, Charles Olson, and our newest premium patron, JD. If you want to become a patron and get a personalized tune-up, head on over to patreon.com slash cmdrmechanic.